Welcome back to the Work Culture Podcast. We're so glad you're with us again today. Uh, our guest is Alessandro Bogliari. He's the CEO and co-founder of the Influencer Marketing Factory. They are a global influencer marketing agency uh, that he started, uh, I think, about six years ago. And they have hit the Inc. 500 list for fastest growing companies. So a lot going on. Uh, and I'm so excited to have you. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Okay, give us just a high level about you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will try to make a long story short. We Italian, you know, <laughs> we, we talk a lot. So you have to shoot me, right? Uh, for, for me to stop. But the uh, joke's apart. Um, I'm Italian from, from, from Milano. I moved to the States around seven years ago. I did a couple of years in Miami and now I'm in New York City, in Manhattan. And uh, I come actually from a different world of like, it's not marketing before I did like a bachelor degree in gra graphic design and art direction. Uh, I've been working uh, on things uh, since I was like 15 years old. I did my first startup when I was 19. Um, it was a website about what to do in Milano, my city in Italy. And, oh, cool. you know, it was an experiment. I didn't make a single, you know, dollar euro from it, but I had a team of 20 people. So I learned a lot about, you know, leadership. I learned a lot about uh, relationship, networking, uh, you know, all those soft skills, right? In addition, yeah. of course, also to art skills, like how to make a website, how to make it like live, how to use social media. And so, yeah, while I was doing that, I, I did this bachelor degree and then I moved to Copenhagen, Denmark, to uh, study more about, you know, entrepreneurship, um, business, uh, marketing, and so on. And, um, you know, I fell in love with marketing. It's something already I liked, but ne really never, like, studied properly. And after that, when I was in Copenhagen, I got into influencer marketing, right? So on the informational side, I was like, okay, this is interesting. This is, it was still new, right? It was almost 10 years ago. Um, you know, they were called influencers, but it was kind of the Wild West. But I got fascinated because I was like, you know what? This is this has a big, big feature, right? If we're able to put data yeah. and analytics behind that, it's going to be big. And after that, I moved to Miami where I co-founded the Influencer Marketing Factory. And then, yeah, they said actually just, uh, you know, a few days ago, we celebrated our sixth year, uh, you know, of, of company. And uh Quite a journey so far. Yeah, uh, yeah you know, we hit the Inc. 500 when we did that. That was last year. Um, to be honest, when we applied, I was like, okay, even if it is 4,999 on the Inc. 5,000, I was going to be happy. And then we hit number 341 or some, wow. 340. And I was like, wow, this is like, I, I couldn't expect, to be honest. You know, it's a, it's a bootstrap company. We started this company with literally $1,500 that every that we, <laughs> that we had, my co-founder and me. And, uh, and, and, and so, yeah, so far, you know, quite a, quite, a, quite a journey. So again, you know, from Italy, passing by Europe and then the US, uh, now in New York City, there is quite a, quite a hectic city, to say the least, uh, but very happy with, uh, with the journey so far. And uh, yeah, happy, happy to share more uh, later during the episode. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to hear that. Uh, how, when did you move to New York? Uh, that we can five, see in the background, by the way. Yeah, That's awesome. uh, around five years ago. Uh, so after okay. a couple of years in Miami. Miami, I, I liked it. I didn't love it necessarily. I'm more of a city person. Uh, and I need, you know, I need, I need culture. I need to go out and, you know, uh, be able to go, you know, and see a stand-up comedian. And if I want to get a pizza at 3 a.m., I can find a spot <laughs> open. While Miami, at least back in the day before all the COVID hit and people start moving there, it, it was a, it was a, it's, it's a fun city, uh, but it was missing things uh, for me. And so I was like, okay, New York has always been a dream of mine. So let's move there and, um, and, and, and I love it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change you for anything in the world. Great. Living the dream. Love that. Uh, so we're going to dive in, right? Mm -hmm. I, and I already warned you, we ask every guest the same first question. Yeah. What is a mistake that you've made in leadership that you'll never forget? Um, hiring uh, the wrong people and trusting the wrong people. Um, you know, many times you, on the hiring side, I would say the, the issue was, uh, Hiring people that you think are senior because that is their title and because they ask more in salary and because their CV on paper is great. And then you start realizing that salary doesn't mean uh, knowledge. Um, years uh, of seniority doesn't necessarily transpose to what you think that seniority is. And because someone working for a big company, bigger than yours, doesn't mean they're going to be the savior getting in your company. That, that was my mistake, thinking that you can have someone that gets, again, you know, a good salary, whatever, they have all this great resume, and you think, oh, they're going to get in, 
and they're gonna basically help you, right? Because when you're the mm -hmm. founder, all the time, you are the one that to fix problems. And yep. once in a while it's like, oh, I wish I had someone. And uh, I don't know if that person exists, maybe, maybe you have to be very <laughs> lucky, but as of now, I haven't found that you just plug in someone in, coming from a different company, and then they get in and they completely uh, make a revolution in your company. Unfortunately, that was not the case. So big mistake uh, that I did last year was hiring the wrong senior people that we had to fire after. Usually we yeah. don't tend to fire after two months, right? Because uh, we really want to nurture the people with us. We have people that have been with us, with us from, the, from, the, from day one still. And um, so we tend not to. But, you know, again, being a bootstrap company, if you spend a lot of money on someone that is not working, in my opinion, the first three months, the first two weeks are already crucial for someone. You have to do the extra yeah. mile to show that, you know, you are there for, for the company. Um, and, and then after three months, uh, two, three months, uh, it's very easy to understand if there is a good fit or not. And so, yeah, like big mistake was to thinking, right, that it was easier, <laughs> uh, you know, to, to then, then actually do that. And the second that is kind of related to this, not, not, not necessarily, but is the trust in, yeah. in people. Many times I, I don't like to micromanage people. Um, and so I was like, you know what, I want to be that person that trust, uh, you know, and, and, uh, and you give uh, power to certain people. And then you find out that those people were not doing what they were supposed to, or they were not like, you know, at a hundred percent. And then you're like, um, then you're like, ah, damn it. You know, maybe, maybe if, uh, I checked a bit more, if I actually not micromanage, right. But so there is always this balance. So. On the one end, I say like, yes, like it was a mistake. On the other end, it's like an honest mistake, right? You want, you want not to be too much on someone, but at the same time, then you realize, okay, we're all human beings with our feelings and emotions. And you have to realize that uh, sometimes, unfortunately, as, as the boss, you have to be there and, and check on everything because after a while, people might just be not passionate about it anymore or they might not be at the standards that they would like to. So yeah, absolutely hiring and, and trusting the wrong people has been a, a, a big one for me. Yeah, I think it's so relatable. We've all been there. Uh, you know, I, I've made some bad hires in my day, some that cost mm -hmm. me so much oh, uh, yeah. money uh, by just having the wrong person. So in one case, literally $600,000. Wow. I mean, I could put it on our p &L. I could show you that's how much that person cost me. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and sorry, like, it's not just monetary, right? It's also right. Your, 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 your mental health. It is your patience with people like people Absolutely. only think about the salary if you if you hire the wrong person it means that you didn't hire the other person maybe it was good it means that you have to reshuffle things around the company it means that even just the hiring process for a, for a startup yeah. it's time consuming it's draining because mm -hmm. we every time that we put an application out we get hundreds of people that apply <laughs> then after that you have to go through tens of calls and then exercises and then you know it's a lot yeah. people don't realize that you know, when you're on the other side, it's like, oh, you know, this should be easier, whatever. Like, no, like if you want to find the right person. So just to say, in addition to the salary that is monetary and that you can quantify, there is something that you cannot yep. quantify. That is, again, your patience, your mental health, your whatever that is. Your whole team. If, if you, that person team, was toxic. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. You know, a bad apple can easily, that, that's what we try to remove as soon as possible. It's never that easy. Again, you know, there is so much going on certain times and it would be easier just to say, let's fire that person, you know, but. Yeah. Are they working on something currently? What about the other people in the company? Yada, yada. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I just recently wrote uh, an article for a fast company and it's not published yet, but my opening line was just resumes are garbage. Mm -hmm. um, my PR company made me change it to resumes are obsolete, but they <laughs> yeah. are garbage. I mean, they, they always have been, but yeah. even now more than ever, right? They're all written by AI. Yes. They're just exaggerations of truth. And <laughs> yes. No, totally. Like, it's funny to me when I see and I read someone maybe that uh, used to work for us and I know what they did and then I read their maybe <laughs> resume online. Right. And it's like, dude, that, that's a team effort. Like, yeah, uh, you, you did part of it, but you cannot say that you helped X amount of revenue because that's not right. true. It wasn't you, you know? So yeah, I agree. And that's why for us, it's very important that we go on a call. We, we, we like, so, what is crazy to me sometimes is that people are like, oh, I have to do an exercise. I'm like, yeah, how do I know that you're good for the company? That is the minimum, the bare minimum. Like you, you, you cannot go to a yeah. place and be like, just hire me. You have to demonstrate that you're going to be like, it means that again, it's not just the money. It's about the time that we're investing in you. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you, how do you like, you know, uh, that's the minimum, right? And so, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you. CV, it's only like, it's, it's okay just to <laughs> understand more or less, but then you need much more from people to understand who they are. Yeah.
Yeah. What are some of the other dimensions that you've integrated? And maybe even tell me more about the exercise that you're talking about. Like how, how are you determining that they are a good fit, or at least to the best of your yeah. ability? So for personally for me, but also for my co-founder um, and, and a lot of senior people in the company, uh, for me, the most important thing is actually more on the soft skills and the attitude of the person. And then the yeah. second skill is hard skills. Why? Because we, you know, we do marketing, right? You can learn that. You can learn on books. You can learn doing. You can learn on YouTube. You can learn in, in college, whatever. If we were talking about uh, being a doctor and a surgeon, let's say, operating, yeah, hard skills is number one. You can of be an, an, an asshole. Sorry for my French, but <laughs> that's what important. What matters is that you're gonna save that person, okay? In yeah. the ER. Um, if uh, if instead uh, we're talking about a people business like an agency, right? A marketing agency. And then you have someone that is very skilled, but the attitude is not there. It could be a bad apple. It's full of, this person is full of red flags. They are not passionate about it. They are not teachable. That is a big issue, right? Yep. Um, so for us, it's like, we want to understand, first of all, is that the right fit with the, with the other rest of the, of the people in our company? Uh, we want the nice people. We want people that, you know, actually want mm -hmm. to work together well. Like, that's the thing. I come from another toxic uh, environment before before my own company uh where it was a very very small company but um i i know that i know what does it mean to work with people that you don't like and that they put pressure on you and your mental health start plummeting and so after a while i was like no matter what we all know that work it's it can be fun but usually it's work right and and so you have a pressure on you you have a lot of these things what you can do it is uh if you are in the field, it's having other people next to you, right? That you can count on and they yeah. will help you out. And I'm so proud that part of our team, they, are, they became friends. They go on vacation together. They spend time together. They go to restaurants together. Like that means that it's not just your nine to five, right? But actually have good people. So to answer your question, once we know that what we call the vibe check, right, is there, then we yeah. go into this, this skills, right? But in addition to that, we get a lot of people that start as junior and then they, we, we prefer them to like, you know, to nurture them, right? And get become yeah. senior and so on. And it's about, you know, are you teachable, right? Are you open for suggestion? Are you open to, you know, um, all, all this type of feedback? And if you're not, it's very difficult to grow, grow in the company, not just like with me as, as the co-founder of the company, but also with your manager and, and the other people like, you know, that they are maybe on the same level uh, as yours. So... Uh, I would say that in a, in a people company, people, it's it what matters. And you should see yep. them as the human beings before the professional. And then the professional is very important because, of course, they have to be ready and everything. But but we don't we don't want uh, not nice people in the company. That would be just uh, what, what's even the point, you know? It doesn't make sense for what you guys do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, those are challenges, right? Hiring the right people. Yeah. We've all had that challenge. We've all made that mistake. But you're also doing something right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you wouldn't be Inc. 500 fastest growing if that weren't the case. So, w your business is so people centric mm -hmm. that you wouldn't be growing, at least as far as I understand. That 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 growth wouldn't be happening if it weren't for the people, if it weren't mm -hmm. for having those right people mm -hmm. in the right seats. So, tell me about your culture. What do you think is the the secret sauce that makes you guys great? I think it's. Uh truly caring about people and not just put it on your website. I met mm -hmm. with so many companies that have all these initiatives online <laughs> and they have all these certifications. Huh? Then check their glass door. Three out of five. Yeah. Two point five out of five. And everyone is complaining. That's what I do all the time. I go and check our competitors and other people, other companies in the business, in, in the industry. And I look for words like toxic, uh, uh, clicky, or whatever, like all these words, right? They come over and over and over. We, we, proudly, we have five stars on Glassdoor, right? Yeah, and I saw so, that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's not easy, but again, it's, it, it takes time, right? Yeah. So many times it's like, I don't know, maybe, uh, I, I don't want to say like all Italians are the same, but like maybe also coming <laughs> from Italy, <laughs> like we care about people. And, and, and the thing is that I, um, like business is business. So I like, uh, I like the American way of doing business. It's like, you know, straight to the point, you know, let's talk about money that on the country, when it comes to Europe, we, we blab a lot and we don't do that much in the U S is the opposite. We don't like people don't talk that much. And sometimes I, I feel that it's missing. The human side component is missing, but you talk about business. And so at the same time coming from, from Italy, 
for us, it was a very important that we were like, you know what, this is a space where if you if something is not going well, but you want to change, you want to do better, you, you need some time for yourself, uh, we're here to listen to you, right? And so that means that, uh, you know, we are giving sometimes like, you know, uh, you know, mental health days uh, or like, you know, maybe maybe like, you know, a, a few weeks ago we said, you know what, we know that we are doing like a great job, all of you. So we're going to give you like, you know, a spy day, a spa day for everyone is going to be like, you know, <laughs> Uh, you know, you just spend it, you know, and we're going to refund you for that. Uh, during the summertime, we did like, you know, you know, summer Fridays. So, you know, after a certain hour, you know, just, just finish, like, you know, Take we don't off, want to yeah. see you on Slack. That, to be honest, again, all these things, they, they might seem small things, but when you are in an agency business, uh, agency business, uh, people like, they don't sleep, they don't eat, they don't, like, it's crazy. Weekends, yeah. are like, and, and we're like, if someone is like, you know, feeling 100% or whatever, we, we, we are like, the first, like as co-founders, we're like the first one to be like, I don't want to be in this call. Like you're not needed. Like just rest, right? Because yeah. we know how much you're doing. And so like all these small things and plus caring. Like I, anytime that I see someone that work with me directly and I see something on their face and I see that something is not going well, I tell them like, hey, let's, let's find 15 minutes. We go over things because... Communication is crucial. If you do not communicate and someone is frustrated about something or how many times they have something like an employee has something going in their own life. I don't want to step on their feet like, you know, getting me like, tell me what is going on. But I want just to be sure, is it about work or is it about your life? Because it's about your life. Uh, we're here for you and we can help you and let me know if you need some time off or whatever. Absolutely. If this work, then we have to discuss it because I'm, I'm the boss here and I want to be sure that you are still <laughs> passionate about this and everything, right? Believe me how much communication and just asking people how you're really feeling. Is there anything yeah. wrong in your life? Is there anything wrong with work that we can talk about? And people appreciate that because again, you are a human being and on the other side, there is a human being. What I say all the time to other like, you know, entrepreneurs and everything, for a second, remember you are talking with a human being. It's a not just being. your employee. It's a yep. person with feelings. It's a person that is going through something. It's a person that maybe there, there is a family issues, whatever. Just talk, communicate. And then after a while, if it's just like, for some reason, someone is still not happy because uh, you, uh, you tried multiple times that it's uh, a certain point you're like, you know, you raise your hand, it's like whatever. But doing all these things, uh, caring, uh, giving sometimes off when needed, uh, uh, little, little perks and gifts, uh, and celebrating also victories with people. Like, you know, if someone yeah. is doing something good, uh, we publicly say that during our monthly meeting. And just, just now, uh, half an hour ago, someone tagged one of our campaign managers about a campaign. And as soon as I saw that, because also the, the LinkedIn page was tagged, I screenshotted it and I put it in our channel and I, I tagged the, the campaign manager and said like, you know, congrats for this. Uh, and everyone else is like, oh, that's amazing, yada, yada. So celebrating, like, again, you know, uh, our people are great. They work a lot, right? They do a great job. You should, you should publicly, or at least with your, with your team, you know, celebrate uh, all these wins and the, the hard work of people. So again, it's all these soft skills. It's just like being a, 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 being a good human being to another human being. It's that simple and still many people don't do that. I agree. I, I mean, I, my last company was an industry where the people were just treated horribly. Uh, mm -hmm. They were, you know, low hourly wage, you know, blue collar workforce. Yeah. And the industry took that to mean that they didn't have as much value as some executive in a high rise. Mm -hmm. And we came along, we said, that's bullshit. Humans are humans. Let's treat these people like they are people. Mm -hmm. And that simple little change because we meant it, because we really meant it, and yeah. it permeated our entire culture, it disrupted the whole industry. We, we grew 3X mm -hmm. over seven years after the company had actually already been around for 33. It was yeah. a 40 year old company wow. when we sold, and most of that growth was the last seven years. Just because we, people matter, and that's what we yeah. committed ourselves to. Yeah, I, I can see this passion behind you that it's not, like sometimes, core values, people centric, they have to be initiatives. They have to be mm -hmm. conscious things that we're intentional about yeah. because it doesn't come naturally. Yeah. I, I see in you that you've got this just natural passion for your people. You've got your European blood mm -hmm. and your care for human beings. And it, it is just no, it's no surprise that y'all are growing as fast as you are. And, 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 and again, you know, maybe it's in the DNA, maybe it's in the blood, but <laughs> uh, you, you truly have to believe in that. I see too many times, uh, I was already mentioning before to you, right? But 
all these all these companies with this website they have dedicated pages and sections and then again you go and check their cluster people complain so i would just say just you know cut the chase there like you know just cut the bs uh, and, and and truly do it right because people are not stupid you know after a while they can see is this a political move or do we actually care about this, right? Yeah. And I understand the, the more the company, and also like many times it's not about the size of the company because uh, I saw big companies treating people poorly and I saw yep. startups. Like, so there's not even about size. Of, of course, with size, it gets complexity. And before you were able to talk with the, maybe with your manager and, and after a while, if you get in a company with a thousand people, it's going to be difficult, right? And there is so much moving pieces that you are not a priority anymore. So I can talk from my own experience of having a company of 50 people, a bootstrap company where I'm still the owner and I can like, you know, uh, take any decision that I want for, for, the, for the better, right? Uh, I cannot speak, uh, you know, for, of course, this company with uh, hundreds and hundreds of, of people, they might be a bit different. But again, if you, if you remember the, the importance of having a uh, of treating others well as you would like to be treated. Uh, I don't want to say that all the problems are going to go away, but uh, at least you know there are going to be uh, people that are, uh, are are passionate to 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 continue working with you. And and even if there is a little issue, they're like, okay, yeah, I get it. There is an hiccup here, but hey, you know my my, my managers, whatever, are treating me well. I like it here. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do a little extra mile because they recognize that. If instead you don't say that, I totally get it. You know, it's, if it's 5 p.m. and you don't like the company. 501, you're already in your car and, and whatever, right? So, yeah, yeah. Uh, are you guys doing uh, midday European siestas at the company, <laughs> or is that or is that even a myth? I don't even know. If that's yeah. True. <laughs> so, so yeah, no, that, that's a big myth about Europe. Eh? You like, know, like people will be like, oh, you Europeans don't work. Uh, we do, we do, we do a lot of work in Europe. The only the big issues with the, with European is. Um, um, definitely during summertime, like August in Italy, August is completely dead. Uh, it means that uh, everything from the first of August till the, the end, and still at the beginning. So what is crazy is that people want to get used to, like you know, they they starting get ready for August. So already the last of July, you start seeing it's out of office. All August is off, and then the beginning of September, people are like slowly getting back at it. So a yeah. big problem of Europe it is that uh, the the, there is definitely too much, like you know, too many, too many holidays, too much time off, and everything. Uh, but during the rest of the day, I would say that it depends by the industry. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't say that you know there is the that the, the the siesta type of thing every single day. I would say that maybe certain things uh, we take it a bit more like um, you know f- f- something that kind of shocked me uh, in terms of um, uh, taking some time during the day. In Italy, it's quite common to go to a restaurant for one hour, one hour and a half uh, to have lunch with your colleagues. While in the US, I saw people eating in their car in yeah. 10 minutes or in front of their computer. And that's, <laughs> that's not good. I do it because it's my company and, and, uh, and I have to. But many times it's not your company. Like, and, and there's nothing really, really urgent. Uh, take some time for yourself. That's what I say. Later. If not, you're going to burn out. And that's not good for anyone. Like, the, 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 it's just, true. Take the time to eat your food and relax a bit. <laughs> and like, you know, if, if not, you're like into this wheel. And for me, again, like, you know, between the, again, between the taking all August off, that is crazy to me. And uh, eating in front of a computer while doing Excel file, you need something in the middle. Yeah, there's got to be that, something in you know, between. Yeah. <laughs> both, both cultures can learn from each other. Uh-huh. Okay? But it's not that easy because uh, unless, again, like unless you move to another country, if you only go there for a vacation, you will never understand the culture of uh, of another country, right? So, so, yeah. so, so I like when people from either part of the world go to other places because that open up your mind a lot, and you can understand. Okay, this is too much. This is too yeah. little. You learn a bit of everything, and uh, uh, but but yes, a good a good a good in the middle. I would say that uh, in middle ground type of thing would help everyone. Well, it sounds like you've created a culture that has intertwined the best of both worlds, and. Uh, yeah, I, this has been a great conversation, Alessandro. You've created something real special with the, the people there. Um, and like I said, not surprised at all that you're growing so fast. Um, so thank you. This has been full of passion and it's been lighthearted and it's also just been so full of insight. Uh, so thank you so much for all of this. No, of course, you know, again, it's something that I really truly care about. So if I can just share my two cents with yeah. people out there listening to me, like how can I, 
get my people a bit happier? I can they stay with you know like a, you know longer attention? I can you know and so on. Again, it's, it sounds simple, but as you said correctly, and I want just to finish on this, uh, it takes still efforts. Yep. It's not just because oh you know I'm gonna no no you have to study like the things uh, or maybe do a survey to people, uh, talk with them, ask like what are the things, then you get all this data and then you give them something right. Uh, again. Sounds simple. It takes a bit of time to, to master it. But believe me, it's better to have people with you for a long time than some of our competitors are called uh, revolving doors agencies, right? Yep. They get in, get out every three months. That is not good for business. It's not good for your managers. There's not good for no one, right? So invest time and, 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 and focus in your people. And believe me, you're going to get so much more out of it. Love it. Well, what would you like to shamelessly plug before we... Sign off here in a sec. Yes. So I, uh, I also have a podcast called The Influence Factor. Uh, it's in the top 1% globally. Uh, just uh, two days ago, we went out with an episode with the CMO of uh, MasterCard. I'm really proud of uh, that episode. We talk about quantum marketing uh, with AI and content creators. So uh, quite a good episode. And, and it was, uh, is, is, has been working there for 30 years, uh, a lot of knowledge. Uh, and so very proud of it. So yeah, if I had to plug something in addition to our website and everything, it would be uh, the Influence Factor uh, podcast because I've been working for the, you know, three years and something now. It's a lot, as you know, right? Doing a podcast, it takes uh, time yep. and everything. <laughs> so uh, now proudly we, we, we got to a direction that, uh, that, that, that I'm very very satisfied for what we got there. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I'm going to check it out myself. Uh, thanks for sharing that. Of uh, course. Well, here we are. Here we are at the end. We're going to do a quick fire. All right. And yes. I'll just say this or that. And you tell me uh, what comes to mind. Uh, I'm going to put you on the spot right off the bat. Europe or Americas? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, my God. No, uh, I would, uh, I'd, Europe. I would still go with Europe. Okay. Okay. Uh, Taxi cab or subway? Uh, these days in New York, subway. Yep, uh, I figured. Yeah. Uh, let's see. F football or a football? So meaning <laughs> soccer or football? I, I have to yeah. go with. I have to go with uh, soccer slash football. Soccer. Yes, I, I still don't understand football uh, entirely. I, I I don't know, so I'm gonna go <laughs> with uh, with soccer. Awesome. All right, last one. Let's put you back on the spot. New York style pizza or Italian style pizza? Ah, Italian. I like that. That's ah. not, no. I, I, li I, I also love like the New York style, but the gun in my head, I will always go with uh, Italian Napolitan pizza because we have also different styles, the Napolitan uh -huh. ones. And I'm lucky enough that in New York, there are like a few very good options that when you eat them, it's like we are in Italy. So, Oh, that's great. That's great to hear. Uh, so fun. Uh, Alessandro, thank you so much for being part of this. Uh, again, it's been uh, a pleasure full of insight and, uh, yeah. Awesome. Of course. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you for having me. Uh, and, and all of you listening and watching, thanks for tuning in. Uh, this has been the work culture podcast and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.